I posted this t-shirt design in my community tab and you guys really loved it. So I figured why not do a layer breakdown video for you. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I wouldn't be where I'm at today without my friends and sponsor of today's video, Aplique.com. If you guys don't know already, Aplique offers the best print on demand experience you can get on the internet right now. Not only are they free, but they also integrate with your e-commerce store. So like if you have Shopify, for example, you can integrate their app directly onto your Shopify store and start selling merch immediately. That means you can do that right now, or you know, at least after watching the video. They offer private labeling so you can make your brand truly feel unique unique and your customers are going to love you, trust me. Aplik has you covered on all fronts. They offer DTG printing, screen printing, DTF, which is new to their website. Let's say you want custom hats, they got you covered. They do everything. They have a plethora of products to choose from. And again, it's an easy app that integrates with your current e-commerce store, or you guys might wanna make a new one just to install their app and try it out. Link is in the description below. Let's get started with the video. This design was really unique because I didn't start in Photoshop. I actually started off in After Effects. Well technically illustrator but i'll explain in a second so with the 3d logo i knew that that was kind of one of the main components to make this design really stand out versus my other work where a lot of my logos are flat right and i didn't want that for this one i wanted to really do something different so i knew that i needed to think outside the box and that's where after effects came in and there's a specific plugin called video copilot that i used in after effects in order to accomplish this but first we have to start off in illustrator with the logo so let me go to illustrator now this logo did not uh vector or image trace correctly so it looks kind of off like the edges are sort of round and not sharp so i would definitely recommend making sure your logo is crisp and just nice and sharp lines before you actually import it into after effects but we're not going to go that far today but i wanted to mention it to you because it is a pretty important thing now you can get away without caring about all that but um you know for me it does make a difference so those little details people might be able to see Luckily for us though, a lot of my work has a lot of grunge textures and different uh, filter gallery effects in Photoshop. So I don't really need to care so much about that with my particular style. So the first thing I need to do is actually select the logo, press Command C, and that's gonna copy it. And now let's open up After Effects and I'll show you guys how I do this. And it's actually kind of crazy. So basically we're gonna be creating a new project for this and a new composition. And in this composition, you just wanna put the exact dimensions that you're going to be using for your uh, text. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna keep it at the default, which is 1920 by 1080. And this is actually going to be just one frame that I'm gonna be using. So I don't need to care about frame rate or anything like that. So I'm gonna hit okay or click okay. And then from here, I'm just going to right click and um, go to new. And then we're just gonna create a, a new solid. I can't speak English right now, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna create a new solid. We can make it any color. And this is going to be, we could just say logo for this one, press okay. And then let's press command V to paste that logo in place. And it's there, that's literally all you have to do. And then I can press command T just like Photoshop. I'm gonna hold in shift while I'm resizing this. And that's pretty much it for that. And then now we can create another layer and this is gonna act like our background layer and we can make this any color. Let's just make it black and we can name this uh, BG. So we know where it is and that's pretty much it. And that can go below the logo. And there you go. Now we're kind of set for um, adding our 3D effect to the logo itself. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to go to effects and preset and I'm going to type in element. So under video copilot under effects, you're going to see element. I'm going to click and drag that to the logo and that's it. And nothing happens yet, but check this out. You want to actually go to custom layers, custom text and masks and under path layer one, you just want to select the logo because obviously that's going to be the main thing there, right? And then everything else can pretty much stay the same. And then you just want to click scene setup. Now at this point, nothing's going to happen, but if you actually click uh, extrude, you're going to see the logo appear. And that's pretty much how this works. So it's uh, pointing to that logo layer that we just made and the background's obviously not being affected, which is great. So at this point I can add all my effects and my, my textures and or different um, materials. I'm gonna actually duplicate extrusion model. So I'm clicking on it and you're gonna see that it has its own material already. So I'm gonna click on the actual um, layer with the T and press Command D and that's gonna duplicate it. And then on this layer, this is going to be our actual um, outline. So on that layer, you're going to see bevel outline and you do wanna check that. Once you click enable bevel outline, you're going to see 
bevel on the very top and then right under bevel you're going to see extrude and that's what we need to left click on and drag to the right and that's going to basically increase the size of that bevel and you can actually see it now which looks really good but here's where the fun really happens you can actually add material to this so you can have a different material for the bevel and the inside of the text as well so we're going to click on the first um bevel which is our inside if that makes sense and then we're going to go to presets materials and let's just add a me metal look to it and you don't even have to drag it on the display you could just drag the material to the actual um material that's under the layer if you want to call it a layer and that's pretty much the way i would probably do it because it's much more accurate and it's less likely that you're going to screw up or something like that but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we can choose any material. We can import our own material. And if you don't like the color of something, you can always change it under reflectivity. And that's kind of how you can really customize this. So let's make this more of like a red color. So we actually should have extruded this first before we did the other step. So what I'm gonna do is click on the first material and we are going to extrude it quite a bit. And that's going to help give us some depth. And let's do the same thing with the gold. Let's copy the exact same extrusion. So I think it's 2.76. And let's uh, just type that in right here, 2.76. And that's gonna make sure it's uh, similar. And then we can just raise it up a little bit more to still give it that, that bevel. And there you go. And now you can see that it looks 3D. And if you don't like the rotation, we can select the group folder and we can change the rotation of this and make it sit a little differently. If you click on the logo layer and go to render settings, you're going to see ambient inclusion, and we do want to change this from um, SSAO to ray traced, and that's just going to make it look a, a lot better. And that's pretty much how you can get this like really, really nice look. Now I did scale the logo up and down because it was way too big, so it does look a little blurry, but I promise you once you render it, it looks a lot better, trust me. What I just showed you guys is exactly how I produce this exact 3D logo. And um, yeah, this is the final composition pretty much without all the effects. So starting from the top, we have lightning and then we have the skew, which is like this little uh, tag down here that I made. And then we have some like grain and all that good stuff. This grain layer pretty much helps the final effect when I actually get to that point. So I always like to add a little bit of grain to my designs. And then I also have a posterize effect, which you don't really need to apply this early on and you'll see why in a second. I don't know why I put it there to be honest with you. I can probably get rid of it. And then below posterize, I actually retitled this layer as eyeshadow. So that's pretty much the drips coming from the eyes. And then we have, of course, the statue right there. And that's like the grainy version of it. And then the background statue, which is like a duplicated copy of the statue. And I added an outer glow or uh, yeah, I think it's an outer glow to give it more depth and um, kind of make it pop off the background a little bit more because if you look at it without this layer, you're gonna see that it kind of just blends into the background, which doesn't look good at all. So I added that layer on purpose. So again, it separates it from the clouds. And then obviously we have the 3D logo, which I imported from After Effects. And then under that, we have cloud under lightning, which is the bottom lightning right here. It just adds a little bit of interest at the bottom so it's not so plain. Now that I look at it, I could probably add a little bit more lightning, but it's fine. Um, and then we have another grain layer, of course, which obviously gives that background some grain as well and then of course we have the clouds which is you know the clouds let me bring it above everything and show you guys what those look like by themselves so let's just drag it above everything and i'll hide this layer and that's what it looks like nothing special it's actually kind of blurry that's the funny thing and i did add a gaussian blur to the background so if i toggle it off you can see it gets a lot sharper and then when i toggle it on it obviously blurs a lot, but that's the background guys. And I found the clouds on unsplash.com and pretty much the trick here is I added a layer mask and basically painted out certain areas. So the way it would work is I would add a layer mask and take a soft round brush like this and I would start painting with black. And that's kind of how I created that shape that you see here. And I also use the same method to blend the clouds together as well. So it was basically two halves combined and blended together with a layer mask. And then I added another layer mask to round the corners. All right, so if we toggle effects on, you're gonna see everything drastically change, but don't worry, it might be confusing at first, but I'll break down each layer. So let's go ahead and toggle everything off and start with the bottom effects here. So the first one is a levels adjustment and let's actually hide posterize as well. 
So the first thing is levels. Now, this basically allows me to offset the midtones of the of the art itself. So if I toggle that off, you're going to see everything kind of darken. And that's kind of how this level adjustment works. Doesn't look good by itself. You need to add to it, right? So the next thing would be posterize. And that's kind of like one of the other um, things that gives your design a little bit of extra style versus just being a normal photo, right? And it, it just, it's a classic t-shirt design effect, honestly, but you need to use it sparingly because it can also ruin your design and make it look weird. And as you can see, it's already starting to band a little bit on the top. And that's simply because Posterize does that. And um, again, that's why I told you, like, be careful with it. But if you use it the right way, you can make it look really, really good. And notice I changed the blend mode of that posterized layer to luminosity. And that's kind of a big key factor too, because if I change it back to normal, you're going to see it change and it's going to actually add this weird coloring effect. And I don't like that. So by making it luminosity, you can avoid all those weird artifacting colors going on. And you can always experiment too, like mess with the blend modes and see what kind of look you can get. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, the cool thing about posterize is it basically breaks your design down into different colors. So if you look at the levels on the top, you'll see that I have six levels, okay? And that basically just means that there's six colors that it's actually um, posterizing, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you were to bring this level up, you're going to see everything looks different. Like the banding on it is a lot more smooth, and that's simply because we're adding more of the banding. And then obviously back to six, we have way more of a drastic change. So let's go back up to 204 now, and you see that it's like smooth again. And again, back to six, we get the sharper edges, which looks cool with this next effect that we're going to be adding, which is a gradient map. Now, this gradient map literally is everything. Without the gradient map, posterize looks like shit. So if we have six levels, we need six colors, five or six colors. I usually do five. I know I kind of skip a color, but you, you'll see what I'm saying in a second. So if I toggle a gradient map on, which I have above it, you'll see that on the gradient map, the, the blend mode is set to linear burn, and if I change it back to normal, it doesn't look as cool. So linear burn basically crunches the colors a lot, and it just makes it look super cool. So not only is the blend mode important for that gradient map, but the colors themselves are super important too, and where they sit within the tonal range. Um, so in the middle here, if I drink, if, if I drink, if I drag this over to the right, you're gonna see the color change. If I drag it to the left, it changes as well. And that is simply because we're changing the color's position relative to the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and everything in between that tonal range, okay? Everything you're seeing in this video has a tonal range. So essentially what you're doing is you're mapping these colors to six levels that are part of the posterize um, effect, okay? Now you're following me, right? So that's an adjustment layer and we're affecting that adjustment layer with the gradient map. And if you wanna find posterize, you just go to adjustment layers and go all the way to the bottom and you're gonna see it right under invert. So you can add it right there. And again, play with the blend modes. I like luminosity, so if you, you can write that down if you guys wanna take some notes. And then gradient map, again, super important. It changes everything drastically. And the gradient map has a linear burn um, layer blend mode uh, uh, applied to it. Next up, we have a pattern fill set to overlay massively important, okay? If I put this back to normal, you're going to see it doesn't look like good at all, right? You just see these little dots. They're not affecting the image because they're just kind of overlaying on top with a gray color. So by changing that to overlay, you're basically blending it into the photo and that just looks so much better. If you take a second and look at this right now, you're probably gonna think to yourself, either A, you're the type of person that says this looks really good, which is totally fine, or you're the person like me that's like, hey, these colors are coming on way too strong. So the next step is adding a hue and saturation uh, adjustment layer in order to desaturate the colors a little bit. Because what happens is when you're adding pattern overlay to a design and you're changing it to the blend mode overlay, it basically crunches the colors and makes them a lot more, uh, it kind of embellishes color and does some weird stuff with it, which again, depending on who you are, you might like that look. But for me, I don't like it. So I add a hue and saturation layer above it, um, the pattern fill, and that will basically dial it back. And you can kind of control how intense you want it if you want to do that. And that's pretty much really helpful. And you can even change the tone of the entire image just by using the hue slider, which is super cool. And then above everything, I have a plastisol texture 
that just basically brings everything together. It looks super cool. It's funny because when you break all this stuff down, it becomes a lot more simple and you can always change up the recipe. I, I consider this a recipe, right? So if you don't like the recipe, add your own flavor to it. Add, add this spice, add that spice until you get something that tastes good to you, right? Because everybody's different. Everybody has different taste buds. So if you don't like this look, don't do it. That's all I got to say. Anyway, that was the layer breakdown for today. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, um, let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. Maybe we can improve the next video somehow. I don't know what your thoughts are, but I would love to hear them, okay? So leave a comment and don't forget, we just launched our Mastering Merch Design course. So if you guys want to learn to master merch design, click the link in the description below and you guys can learn to design t-shirts like a pro. And also you can start printing your t-shirts using uh, Applique, our sponsor today. And um, I think you guys are gonna find a lot of value there. So my name is Charlie Pangas. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video.